Have you ever been to a city and asked yourself, could I live here? Experimentally, you start looking at all the apartment prices and real estate shops, playfully pretending that you would actually make the move one day. Melbourne is that kind of city, touted the most livable one in the world. But what makes it feel so lived in? The type of friend you don't see for years yet pick up from right where you left off, inside jokes included. The first things that comes to mind when I think of Australia are the Great Barrier Reef, beaches, surf, a blonde girl asking me where the bloody hell are you, kangaroos, and the Sydney Opera House. Call it a stereotype, but we tend to associate countries with how they are presented in their tourism campaigns or through images perpetuated in the media. Not really fake news, but a curated image. You guessed it, overnight's back. Melbourne draws a blank, mostly known for its rivalry with Sydney, yet almost always losing to it in the tourism spectrum. Sydney takes in on average about twice as much international visitors yearly. However, the city has a long history of being one of the most ethnically diverse in Australia and has set itself as its cultural center. It's the capital of cool and is also the gateway to the beautiful region of Victoria. Welcome to beautiful Melbourne. It feels good to be back doing some travel videos for you guys. Um, so we've just arrived at the airport, just really wanted to kind of break down how to get to the city. On the high side, a taxi to the city will cost you about 50 AUD and will take you about 30 minutes. On the other end of the spectrum, the smart bus costs about 5 AUD and takes up to 50 minutes. Or do what we did today and just rent a car since we'll be here for a couple of days, so we need to be flexible and nimble. But yeah, let's just get it started, let's go. Once you're in the city, you'll quickly realize that the CBD is quite small and you can use a free tram system. Outside of that, you can buy a flexible Miki card, which will allow you to use the trams, metro, and bus systems to reach the other suburbs. A seven-day pass will set you back 43 Australian dollars. Unfortunately, there are no single ticket purchases. So we're finally settled in. We were getting a little tired, so we decided to go just straight in the middle of it. We're staying in the Melbourne CBD, so it's extremely central. And then we're at this place called the Arbory. Great drinks, sorry, in true Australian style with a perfect espresso martini. A lot of people are out and about already. It's Saturday night, so it's gonna be a really, really great night. But before we get into that, I wanted to give you a brief breakdown of all the different neighborhoods and towns um, around Melbourne, so that way you can kind of decide where you want to stay. Anything you will find on a guidebook will be compacted within the CBD area, so much so that you may be walking for 15 minutes and find yourself at an inner suburb already. The rest is a little confusing. The city of Melbourne and Port Phillip share some of the following suburbs. Albert Park, home of Melbourne's F1 Grand Prix circuit. St Kilda, famous for its Sunday art market and beachfront. South Melbourne, known for the Clarendon Shopping Street and Market. Carlton, the traditional home of Melbourne's Italian community and the main university. In the city of Yarra, you'll find Fitzroy, the original Bohemian Quarter filled with restaurants and boutiques. Richmond, known for its little Vietnam and low-cost shopping. Collingwood, with its hip shopping on Smith Street. In the city of Moreland, you'll find Brunswick, sometimes dubbed as the new It Spot. And then finally, in the city of Stonington, there is Peron, one of my favorite shopping and eating districts, and South Yarra, with its higher-end shopping. Food's finally arrived. We are absolutely famished. Um, I ordered just a bunch of very eclectic food that you'll find here, but you'll see that throughout these videos, you'll kind of have a taste of everything here, like in terms of the melting pot of flavors and nationalities that come through here. So fish and chips, fried halloumi, some hummus, crispy calamari. What more could you ask for? Nothing much, actually. This fish and chips looks insane. You think that London has the best fish and chips? Some people would actually argue that Melbourne has some really good ones as well. Having breakfast here is probably my favorite thing to do. They take it to another level. 
be it the availability of amazing produce or the eclectic culinary tapestry that is Australian food, it's created this laid-back ethos where brekkie is casual, where the plates do the dressing up. Match that with a love for flat whites and espressos, you've got no reason to start off your day without a gourmand grin. So we finally had our first cup of espresso. It's delicious. We're going to be drinking coffee all day long and throughout all the days that we're here, but we couldn't come to Melbourne and not have like one of these really pretty bowls that they have absolutely everywhere, and obviously avocado smash or avocado toast. Now that's a perfect bite. That's so good, dude. Now the bowl. It's like chia, watermelon, crunchy stuff, flowers, also known as um, rainbow food. <laughs> really nice. If you can look inside, it's kind of like stuffed. There's like a bottom layer of peanut butter, I think. And then on top, you got this like peanut butter cream and some sort of jelly, probably raspberries. Mmm, it's so rich, creamy. The raspberry is really kind of nice and bright. But the, the real winner here is kind of like that flaky, perfect kind of croissant sheets that we saw a while ago, just cooked to perfection. So you have like that crunch, yet it's soft in the middle. Look at that. So this looks even more complicated to eat. Uh, this is pumpkin. Let's just kind of tear it apart. Oh, look at that. Mmm. I'm not usually a pumpkin guy when it comes to sweets, but that's delicious. Everywhere you look, there seems to be a coffee shop. Even before hipster baristas pulling shops were a thing, Melbourne was already doing it right. The world calls it third wave. Here, they've just always known it as coffee. Um, is their favorite place. This is Market Lane Coffee. Really tasty stuff as usual. Um, and yeah, I just wanted to kind of speak about how Melbourne is, is touted as the most livable city in the world, which is, it is, but it doesn't come without its faults, and that is the weather. When the sun disappears, it gets extremely cold. It can change at a pin drops notice, and it's always fluctuating. So make sure you come prepared, and make sure you know exactly what time of year you're coming in, so you know what to expect. Rain, or cold gusts, or just full-on sun like we had yesterday, and today it's a little chilly. So we're currently in the Fitzroy area, and it just feels like its own little town. Um, really artsy, lots of graffiti, lots of laneways. Um, and if you're into coffee, the grains are just fantastic anywhere you go. And Mario's was actually one of the first proper espresso coffee shops. Um, so yeah, it's kind of like a little pilgrimage. If you're into it, pass by Mario's and Fitzroy. Try out these places if you want some more. Rudimentary, Cold Black, Mr. Sister, Seven Seeds, Higher Ground, Top Paddock, Two Birds, One Stone, Manchester Press, Hardware Society, The Kettle Black, or Friends of Mine. There are about 40 laneways and arcades hidden about. These have become icons and are now an integral part of the aesthetic of the city. A bird's eye view of a map will show you a grid system of streets, but as the town developed, areas were subdivided multiple times meaning back access had to be created for the buildings fronting the larger streets. These little secrets were born out of necessity, but have become a breeding ground for hidden speakeasies, underground theaters, coffee shops, and restaurants. The city never lacks in terms of culture. Um, people here love being outside and kind of walking around, and, and by walking around, you see lots of different things that are really interesting. This is the National Gallery of Victoria. Currently, you have uh, an exhibition by the MoMA that's happening in After Hours, which is really fun. And there's lots of different museums you can choose from, so if art, culture, and history are your things, and this is the type of city for you. Once you've had your fill from strolling the botanical gardens, catching a temporary exhibit at the National Gallery, the Melbourne Museum, the Immigration Museum, or the ACMI, there is always something happening. Whether it be watching a play at the East End Theatre District or a food and wine festival, there's bound to be an event somewhere. So make sure to do a quick search online before arriving. 
The city is pretty much littered with green open spaces. Littered is definitely the wrong term for that. But just to say that the outdoors are so important here, I think people really appreciate them. When it's pretty like this, and we've been very lucky so far with the weather, like we're going into their summer because it's about the beginning of October, but you'll still have some really cold nights. But when it's sunny out, literally everyone's wearing like tights and athleisure wear. For people who are looking for kind of like that work-life balance, I can see why Melbourne is so attractive to them. The next big thing here is spectator sports. If it can be played, people will watch it. From Aussie rules football to cricket, rugby, the Australian Open or horse racing, even if you don't know any of the teams or players, watching a game is a great idea. Might be strange that we're eating pizza in Australia, but actually there is, I think, the largest population the UFC is happening. So that's what you hear the oh. So Melbourne has this really kind of strong tradition of Italian roots. We're gonna explore that in another video where we speak about all the kind of culinary heritages and cultures that you can find in Melbourne. But for the time being, we were just hankering for some pizza and obviously we've been eating in some restaurants where the prices might seem a little high, but you also have access to slightly more affordable uh, restaurants and this is one of them. Except for the oysters, because those are a little luxury always. And Australia has some of my favorite oysters in the world, so I'm gonna try this out. So naturally salty and briny and absolutely beautiful. But now for the star of the day. This is 400 Gradi, one of the really most popular restaurants here in Brunswick. And they are said to make a killer pizza. Let me just cut through that. Mm. That's like a proper traditional Napolitana pizza. So nice. So obviously we're not here to shop, but there's lots of options for people who are looking for maybe some clothes or some handicrafts or some furniture. There's a lot to go around. In the CBD itself, you have Melbourne Central, you have Emporium, which are big shopping malls. I put other options up as well, if in case you need to shop while you're here. Here are some other restaurants that come highly recommended. Tipo 00, Super Normal, Chin Chin, Long Chim, Shandong Mama, Abacus Bar and Kitchen, Smith and Daughters, Miznan, Abyssinian, Sunda, Ishizuka, Atlas Dining, Cumulus Inc., or Kisumi. Being so close to the sea, you can imagine that you will never go wanting for wonderful seafood. The catch here is always seasonal, and you'll find fish and shellfish that are rarely fished anywhere else. Being strategically positioned, you can indulge in both warm and cold water varieties. So make sure you make it a point to have one proper seafood lunch. So you don't leave Australia without having some sort of seafood and we thought we were just gonna have fish and chips and then we saw this place and we're like, hey, this looks delicious and this platter is mega. It's a huge mix of cooked, fresh, raw, There's really something so special about the fish here in general. So different from what we have back home and what we have in Europe. The state of Victoria has about 12 wine growing regions. So when you're in the city, make sure to drink to your heart's desire, always in moderation. Here are some of my favorite places to do just that. Embla, Bar Liberty, Beneath Driver Lane, the Carlton Wine Room, or Juliet. Wine is obviously best paired with food, so we headed to Cutler & Co. for a little bit of both. That was so good. We just were a little embarrassed to take out the big cameras because it was a very quiet and kind of like dim and intimate place. Um, but the food was just delicious. We had a good time. Drinks are just as important as food to Australians, and day drinking is just part of the lifestyle. You gotta appreciate everything that's kind of like hyper local, and when you go to a lot of pubs or restaurants around the city, you'll find certain beers that are actually made within Melbourne or in the Melbourne city limits. So right now, we are a Temple Brewing Company. Um, we have a selection of all their beers. Oh, that's nice. That's the Pilsner, I believe. This is a tropical ale. Nice and fruity. Obviously, these are not all for me. <laughs> There's two people here. 
And then finally, the embryo. Good times. After some wine and craft beers, cocktails are an integral part of the scene. We wanted to learn more from some of the people who make all the wonderful drinks that you'll find at the counter. The Black Pearl is considered one of the best bars in Australia, and they have a 16-year history to prove it. I feel like we're quite unique here. We've got, you know, such a, a vibing late night culture. Uh, people love coming out a bit later, staying out later. Yeah, and there's just always somewhere sort of interesting that's open later, not just, uh, you know, oh, they're open but they don't do anything cool. There's always somewhere you can go that sort of uh, will have something yeah. that you want. And so with down here, we uh, we try to, I think, change over the menu every year or, or less or year and a half or so. We've got a new menu coming out soon. But upstairs, we actually uh, we have a uh, revolving cocktail list that sort of changes every week to two weeks. Um, which is always really cool, you know, so you can uh, maybe, you know, come up with an idea one week and, and just throw it on. Make sure to also check out The Everly, Lily Blacks, Heartbreaker, Bar Americano, Above Board, Cookie, or Bad Frankie. For beers, head on to Moondog, Westside Aleworks, Mountain Goat, or The Crafty Squire. Don't miss out on the live music scene in some of these iconic bars. North Coast Social Club, Cherry Bar, The Tote, The Evelyn, or The Howler. Finally, if you want to get loose, go to Boney, Workshop, Section 8, Lounge, Naked for Satan, or Glamoram. The city can seem expensive at times, but that doesn't mean you can't have good food at a fair price. For those, you can go to most of the markets in town, from the Queen Vic to the Peron Market to smaller eateries and cafes. I will be featuring those in the next four videos that I'll be posting about Melbourne. There's also nothing wrong with having a good large-sized chicken parm at a local pub. When all else fails, a good old pub just hits a spot. We got some chicken parmas over here. Basically a fried chicken filet with lots of sauce and cheese. It always hits a spot. And if you want to be slightly adventurous, we've got a little kangaroo happening. Kangaroo meat. You haven't tried it. Don't knock it. it tastes like a steak. Well, it is a steak. I mean, it tastes like a beef steak. Pretty good. So, back to our question. Could I live here? I think it's important to ask ourselves why such a thought would ever come to mind. It's not that we aren't content with our current city, but more that Melbourne is the kind of place where even if you spend a week here, you would still feel like you're missing out on something. Whether it's an upcoming show or a new gentrifying suburb, if I were to compare it to a foreign counterpart, it reminds me of a Paris or a New York, where you can catch a clear snapshot of the skyline, yet you will always want to delve deeper into the story behind the big picture. The fact that the city keeps its secrets quite well makes it a mystery that you know you would only be able to solve, if only you had the time. I think what I love most about the city is that there's always something going on, whether it be a arts festival, a music festival, a food festival, there's just something for everyone. The big question is, is could I live here one day? I think so. The only thing I would kind of hold against Melbourne is that it's just so far from everything else, but aside from that, it's beautiful.